expected your hands to be like rock formations themselves, but you have kind of normal hands, right? Uh, I mean, yeah. now that I see them, they're a little beefy, they're muscular, but it is, I mean, your life depends on the strength in your hands. To some extent, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, yeah but yeah. When, when you're climbing, I mean, I guess not when you're sleeping or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, they're just normal. You know? It is really, it is a miracle that you are, it's a miracle that you and 50 Cent are alive, it really is. So. <laughs> Tell me exactly, explain exactly what's different about the way you climbed this rock wall. Well, so what, what I did was climbing it without a rope or without gear. So I was just by myself and just my shoes and my chalk bag and I just climbed, climbed up the rock wall. The chalk bag is to keep your hands dry? Yeah, it's just like a gymnast to dry your hands so that your grip stays good. And you, are you fearful when you're on the wall, when you get up? 3,000 feet, something like that? Uh, well, I, I probably would be if I hadn't prepared for it. I mean, so with climbing El Capitan, it was something that I've been dreaming about for years and then spent probably a full year in preparation. So How do you prepare? You it, go to the R REI store and you climb up the Yeah, exactly. Thing? You, buy, you buy a little starter kit and you just, like, <laughs> figure it out. Um, no, I mean, uh, so uh, the biggest part for me, the preparation, was the visualization, the, the psychological side, like, imagining that it was possible. And that took, like, years to sort of wrap my head around the idea. It did. But then, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty, you know, when every time you drive into Yosemite and you see the wall, you're like, that's a big wall. Has anyone else pretty, tried yeah. to climb that wall? Uh, no, no. No, okay. Uh, In that no. way. I mean, so people have no, tried, I, mean, I assume, but. Generally, when you look at the wall, you're filled with fear. <laughs> you're like, oh my God, that's crazy. Yeah, I, I know uh, I am. Yeah. Have, yeah. Have, you, have you been there? What's that? Have you been there? Have you seen the walls? That's I have pretty... been there, and I've seen the walls. It never occurred to me to climb one of them. There you are in the crevice. Is, do you look for a crevice? Yeah. In general? Yeah, so um, so that's the big part of the preparation, is spending time rehearsing the route, memorizing the moves, and uh, making sure the conditions are good, and just, like, getting ready. What do you mean, rehearsing the route? It looks like you're go just going up. Uh, yeah, but I'm, so, it looks like I'm just climbing, but each movement of my hands and feet is super well thought out, very controlled, very precise. So, um, I mean, in this particular clip, like, every movement of my hands has been choreographed, basically. I'm, like, executing a routine. Like, I could actually talk you through all the moves on that particular section of wall. You like, remember right everything. Yeah, yeah. Like, almost like a race car driver, and they know Yeah, the exactly. Track. Memorizing the turns, for sure. That, and when you're yeah. on that wall, and how long does it take to climb? What did it take? So, uh, climbing El Cap took uh, almost four hours. Four right. hours. So, when you're right. on that wall, and you're climbing, do you ever think about falling? Uh, well, I think a lot about falling ahead of time. Okay. Um, really, I mean, that's a big part of visualizing is like whether or not you're actually ready to go up and take on that kind of a challenge. I mean, you have to sort of think through the whole consequences. Um, but then once I, once I decide that I'm ready, then I'm 100% committed to it and I just go up there. And... Before you do it, do you write like a note to your mom or anything? No, that's, that seems overly dramatic. It does. Uh, yeah. I mean, a little bit. It doesn't to me, it really doesn't. No. But... <laughs> have you ever like run into like a mountain lion or anything when you're doing something like this? Not many mountain lions climb quite that well. <laughs> oh, no. But no, you run into mice and a lot of birds. Like, it's not uncommon to put your hand into a crack and have a bird run down your arm and, you know, escape. And you just have to be ready right. for that and prepared for the bird yeah, or the but, mouse. Yeah, no, mice too, honestly. They run around in the cracks and stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, you just spent... So I've spent tons of time on that wall with a rope on, and so you sort of get used to all the various things that might happen. I assume you love climbing, right? I mean, yeah, I assume I, you love that. I, I do love climbing. Why not have the rope? Because you could still get that same climbing No, so, so that's a fair question. But so I do have a rope probably 95% of the time. But then every once in a while you have that sort of peak experience that where you choose not to use the rope. So you get some kind of satisfaction or... Is it a thrill or what is it exactly? No, that you it's kind of like the deep satisfaction of taking on a very big challenge and then sort of making it, making it happen. Uh, I mean, I think of it as like the Super Bowl of my climbing or something. I mean, climbing is such an individual sport. You just kind of do your own thing. You know, there's no, there isn't much competition. Competition's all indoors and what I'm doing on big mountains is sort of a whole separate world. Right. And so you sort of have to choose your own challenges and push yourself in whatever way you, you want to. And you know, I'm inspired by these big walls and I'm inspired by doing them by myself. There was an article written about you, I think, in the New York Times, and this, tell me if I have this right, but so at some point during the interview, you just climbed in the middle of these two buildings. That's, uh, yeah, that's, that's true. Were you wearing your climbing shoes, or were you just in regular shoes? Uh, well, something like that you probably could do in regular shoes, because you're just counter-pressure with the building. Well, I couldn't, but... No, maybe. no, I think you could. 
You, I think you have strong legs. You know? <laughs> you push hard. And and did I mean were you arrested for this or? How does this um, work? I think security may have been called later. <laughs> but the thing about it is, you go up, you come down quickly, and then you leave, and you just never really know if anyone shows up. When did you start doing this? Like, at what age did you just start climbing things? Was so it that kind of climbing, particularly climbing on buildings and playing on structures? I mean, I've did that since I was a little kid. Um, you know, starting on my my, my house probably. Uh -huh. um, but then I started climbing indoors in a gym when I was 10 or 11, and I've been climbing, you know, 20 years since then. And your mom was okay with you climbing all over everything? Um, she, you know, she couldn't stop me I don't, that you well. You know why I keep thinking of her? Because my kids, I was on a trip once in Wyoming, and my kids wanted to parasail. And they're like, come on, let us parasail, whatever. And I was like, you can't parasail. And they're like, it's safe, it's safe. I was like, it may be safe for you, but when you land, I'm going to be dead of a heart attack. <laughs> Yeah, so mom actually, when we were little kids, I have this memory of uh, her saying, like, you can't go on the roof, you can't go on the roof. It's really easy to climb onto my roof via the fence. And so, like, as a little kid, I wound up climbing up on the fence, getting on the roof, and then we sort of jumped off the roof and went back, and we're like, oh, we climbed on the roof. And she was like, well, if you're up on the roof, go ahead and clean the gutters. And I was like, oh. And I'm like, all right, you know. And so for the whole rest of my life, I've been doing all the, like, work up on top. But I'm like, that's fine. <laughs> like, mommy's a little monkey, she said. Yeah, <laughs> Uh, How the hell did you not get the part of Spider-Man? It's unbelievable. Uh, yeah. I would be so angry. If I did. No, it's unbelievable. It's, and so Nat Geo is, is doing a documentary, and they're going to show the whole journey of you climbing the Al Capitan. Yeah, that's correct. So we've been filming a documentary for the last year um, with my North Face teammate Jimmy Chin. He uh, he's been shooting the film, and the two of us have basically just spent a year documenting the process to get ready for this, and then to actually climb the wall. Um, I can't yeah, wait to see that. I That's... actually I can't wait either. I haven't really seen any of the material yet because um, they're it... very strict about the documentary, and so I, I don't know. Is there anything left uh, to climb after you climb El Capitan? Is there anything bigger than that? Uh, not, not. In my... I mean, there are technically some bigger walls in the world, but they're in very remote places like Greenland or Pakistan or like far-flung expedition. Yeah. But um, to me, I mean, there's nothing more inspiring than El Capitan. I mean, that's like that's been my dream my whole life. Well, and now it's not. It's, it's amazing. You're an amazing, amazing person, and you will be missed. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Well, that was... that's Alex Honnold, everybody. Thank you, Alex. Do you love clicking buttons and subscribing to things? Then click the button to subscribe to my channel, and you'll finally be happy.